Welcome, enthusiasts! In today's video, we'll dive into the fascinating world of perpetual harvest grow cycles and its effects on cannabis plants. Whether you're a beginner looking to refine your skills or a seasoned cultivator aiming to maximize efficiency and yields, this video is packed with valuable information that can help you along your journey. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on our latest videos. Also, please remember that this is an educational video and therefore all information provided is for educational purposes only. Now let's get started. To begin this video, let's examine what exactly is a perpetual harvest grow cycle. A perpetual harvest grow cycle is an advanced cultivation technique designed to ensure a continuous supply of crops by maintaining multiple stages of plant growth simultaneously. This setup eliminates downtime between harvests by creating an overlapping schedule where seedlings, vegetative plants, and flowering plants coexist in the same grow operation. By staggering the growth stages, a cultivator can harvest plants at regular intervals, often every few weeks, rather than waiting for an entire grow cycle to complete. The system maximizes space, time, and resources, making it an appealing approach for cultivators seeking efficiency and consistent yields. The concept of perpetual harvesting isn't new as historically. Farmers staggered planting schedules for crops to ensure a steady supply of food throughout the growing season. The agricultural revolution of the 18th and 19th centuries marked the beginning of modern agronomy, as scientific principles began to inform planting strategies. Advances in agricultural tools, irrigation, and the introduction of new crops encouraged farmers to experiment with staggered planting to optimize yields. In the 20th century, with the advent of mechanization and chemical fertilizers, staggering planting schedules became even more systematic. Large-scale farms in industrialized countries began using crop planting software and weather predictions to refine their planting and harvesting timelines. This approach gained traction not only for food security, but also for commercial efficiency, ensuring that labor and machinery were utilized year-round. In cannabis cultivation, the perpetual harvest model gained popularity as indoor growing technology advanced during the latter part of the 20th century. Interestingly, cannabis is particularly well-suited to this growing technique, thanks to its short life cycle and responsiveness to controlled environmental conditions. For example, in a conventional setup, a grower typically completes one full grow cycle, including vegetative and flowering phases, before starting a new crop. This process often spans 12 to 16 weeks, depending on the strain and growing conditions, meaning only three to four harvests per year are achievable. In contrast, a perpetual grow cycle allows cultivators to harvest every few weeks by maintaining plants in overlapping stages of growth. This can effectively double or even triple the number of yields annually. For small-scale growers, it offers the opportunity to produce consistent crops throughout the year, eliminating the feast or famine cycles of single-stage grows. On the other hand, for commercial growers, it significantly increases efficiency by maintaining steady production and lowering operational costs, which is critical for meeting market demand. But the people who really benefit from this type of grow cycle are beginners, as it provides a structured approach to learning more about the cannabis plant. By working with plants in various growth stages simultaneously, new cultivators can quickly gain hands-on experience and refine their skills by experimenting with different strains, growing techniques, and nutrient regimens without interrupting their overall production. The key feature when designing a perpetual harvest setup is to divide the grow operation into three distinct areas – propagation, vegetative growth, and flowering. Each space must be equipped with the appropriate lighting, ventilation, and nutrient delivery systems to support the specific requirements of that stage of growth. For example, in space number one, you will have the propagation area. The propagation area is where the life cycle of your plants begins making it vital to establish an environment that fosters healthy root development and early growth. Whether you are starting from seeds or clones, this space should prioritize stability and gentle conditions to ensure a strong start. Lighting in the propagation area should be low intensity, such as T5 fluorescent or LED grow lights with a light cycle of 18 to 24 hours per day to avoid overwhelming the delicate young plants while encouraging root and shoot development. 
Humidity levels should remain high, ideally between 70 to 85 percent, while the temperature should stay stable, ranging from 70 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Some growers will use a humidity dome which can help maintain these conditions and, if needed, a propagation heat mat can provide additional warmth. Using a light and airy growing medium such as seed starter plugs, rock wool cubes, or peat pellets can aid delicate roots to grow freely and establish themselves. Also remember to ensure gentle airflow throughout the area in order to prevent stagnant air and reduce the risk of mold or mildew. Plants typically remain in the propagation area for one to two weeks before transitioning to the vegetative area. The vegetative area is where plants concentrate on developing robust roots, sturdy stems, and lush foliage in preparation for the flowering stage. This phase requires high-intensity lighting such as metal halide, full-spectrum LED grow lights, or compact fluorescent lights. Providing an 18-hour light cycle followed by six hours of darkness creates an ideal balance, promoting vigorous growth while allowing the plants a necessary rest period. Humidity levels should remain between 50 to 70 percent, while also maintaining a consistent temperature between 70 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, as sudden fluctuations can stress the plants and impede growth. Additionally, nutrient solutions rich in nitrogen like kelp meal are crucial during this phase, since nitrogen supports leafy, robust growth. Maintaining the correct pH level of 6 to 6.5 for soil or 5.5 to 6 for hydroponic systems ensures efficient nutrient absorption. Airflow is also vital in the vegetative area. Growers will use oscillating fans to help strengthen stems and prevent the development of hot spots caused by lights. Plants will typically stay in the vegetative stage for 3 to 6 weeks, depending on the strain and the desired size of the plant before flowering. Finally, the flowering area is where plants transition to producing buds, making it the most critical stage of cultivation. This space requires precise environmental control to maximize the quality and yield of the harvest. For example, flowering specific lights such as high-pressure sodium HPS or full-spectrum LEDs emphasizing red and far-red wavelengths are essential for this phase. To trigger flowering, adjust the light cycle to 12 hours of light, followed by 12 hours of complete darkness. Humidity levels should be between 40 to 50 percent, while temperatures remain steady, with the daytime ranging from 68 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit and nighttime temperatures slightly cooler, around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It is important to remember that proper airflow and ventilation are crucial in the flowering area, to prevent stagnant air and manage the heat generated by intense lighting. Multiple fans can help maintain air circulation, while a robust exhaust system equipped with a carbon filter will manage odors and ensure fresh air is exchanged. The flowering stage typically lasts 8 to 12 weeks, depending on the strain and growing goals. The two most important things to remember when setting up this type of operation is timing and management. Timing is critical to achieving a seamless perpetual harvest as it ensures that as one batch is harvested, another is ready to transition into flowering, maintaining a continuous production flow. Additionally, growers must maintain meticulous records of each batch, tracking growth stages, nutrient schedules, and environmental conditions to ensure optimal health and maximize plant yields. To put this process into perspective, let's explore a sample perpetual harvest cannabis grow cycle with an eight-week flowering period and how it could be structured. In week one, the grower will start batch one in the flowering room. Simultaneously, they will start batch two as clones or seedlings in the vegetative area. In week three, the grower will move batch two into the flowering room and begin batch three in the vegetative area. In week 5, they will then transition batch 3 to the flowering room and start batch 4 in the vegetative area. In week 7, they will continue the cycle by introducing batch 4 into the flowering room and starting batch 5 in the vegetative area. By week 9, the grower will begin to harvest batch 1 and introduce batch 5 into the flowering room. This cyclical pattern ensures a new harvest every two weeks with plants in the propagation area, vegetative, and flowering stages simultaneously. Adjustments can be made based on strain-specific flowering times or grower preferences. As we wrap up today's exploration of perpetual harvest grow cycles, it's clear that this advanced cultivation technique is a game-changer for growers at all levels. 
Whether you're a beginner aiming for year-round supply or a commercial cultivator striving for efficiency and market consistency, the Perpetual Harvest Method offers unparalleled advantages. Thank you for joining us on this educational journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're always up to date with our latest content. And we'd love to hear from you. Comment below with your thoughts, questions, or experiences about perpetual harvest setups. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay curious.